So if you want to get to seven figures, it's kind of irrational. So what that means is that you're going to have to really stretch yourself if you've not done yet, done it yet in ways that you've not really stretched before. It's really going to, to require you to really step outside your comfort zone in a lot of different ways. You are listening to Amplify Your Success Podcast, episode 346. And today, discover the three stages that will fast track your business to a monthly six-figure income. You're ready for this? Let's get started. Welcome to the Amplify Your Success Podcast. Get ready to ramp up your revenue, amplify your impact, and make your mark in the world. This is the show for experts, thought leaders, and service professionals who want to shatter their limits and achieve that next level. You're going to find out from other experts and influencers how they made it. Now, let's get amplified. Hey there, inspired entrepreneurs and business leaders. It is your host, authority amplifier and possibility igniter, Melanie Benson. Today, uh, I have a really awesome guest joining us, somebody who I've known for a really, really long time and cannot wait to share his extraordinary insights with you. You're going to love today's episode. And before I drop you into that conversation, because we are talking about going from maybe six-figure years to six-figure months. And I know what happens when somebody thinks about massively growing their revenue like that. One or two things happen. Either you're excited, and I hope you're excited and inspired, and you can't wait to step into that. And then sometimes people are terrified, and they start to have um, this internal conversation and this story emerge about the problems with something like that. And so if you catch yourself feeling constricted or concerned or apprehensive or anything that's not excited about moving from six-figure years to six-figure months, please know, first of all, you're not alone. And secondly, there's probably something that's showing up that's blocking your ability to step into your authority and be paid well for that. And I've created a quiz that helps people identify what's really in the way of you fully uh, maximizing your expertise and being paid really, really well. I mean, I want you to make good money being an impact, an impactor and an influencer, an impactor. (laughs) Yes, an impactor, (laughs) somebody who can make a great impact in the world, but not, it won't happen if you have um, blocks in the way, barriers that are Um, keeping you from fully stepping into that. So you deserve to be paid well. Let's get you paid well. I want you to go take my quiz. It's a quick three-minute quiz. It'll ask you some uh, very specific questions, and then it'll spit out and tell you like, okay, here's where your blocks are, if you have any. And if you go to melaniebenson.com forward slash authority quiz, you'll be able to take that quiz and be sure to put your name in at the end because I've put together a very short um, little training to help you unpack those results of your quiz and help you really learn what steps you need to take right now to get paid well to share your expertise with the world. Okay, now let's get into today's episode. Welcome back, Amplifiers. Today, we're talking with my friend Ron Reich. And the whole point of our focus today is how to get to those 100K months. He's got three stages that will put you on the fast track. So I'm excited to talk to him. Now, Ron and I go way back. We've known each other for many years. He is a sought-after marketing strategist and consultant. A former lawyer, Ron has been selling online for over 10 years. After launching over 50 of his own products in a variety of niches, he became the secret weapon behind many of the biggest names in the industry, including... This is a very impressive list, by the way. Hey Thank House you. Publishing, Todd Herman, Selena Sue, Denise Duffy Thomas, and Ryan Levesque. And his current focus is helping emerging experts scale from six to seven figures through his proprietary, proprietary marketing systems. Ron, it's so great to reconnect after all these years. Thank you yes. for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited. Yeah, me too. So... You, I'm kind of alluded to the fact that there's these three stages that you help people go through that experts have to go on this mm-hmm. journey through to get from six to seven figures, which is really what, you know, if we're doing six figure months, we're hitting seven figures. Yeah. But um, let's unpack those a little bit and talk me through them. 
Okay, cool. So the first, uh, I'll just list three stages, then I'll, um, how do you want to, you want to talk one at a time or I'll yeah, just. Why don't you outline it for me and then we'll, we will go into each of them a little bit. Okay, great. So the three stages are, the first stage is the jump start stage. That's typically when someone goes from kind of zero to typically anywhere from like two to three, four hundred thousand dollars a year. It's kind of like going from zero K months to anywhere from twenty five to forty thousand dollar months, more or less. And then the next stage is what we call the acceleration stage. That is where we really go from that kind of multi mid six figure and the lower multi six figure to kind of mid multi six figure, which would be anywhere from kind of going to like three, four hundred thousand to really really six, seven, eight hundred thousand. And then the overdrive stage, that's when we actually scale to seven figures and beyond. And we're doing our consistent 100K months. And then depending on what kind of business you want to build, you can kind of stay in that range where some people like to build eight figure empires. Hmm. Yeah. So let's talk about that first stage. Cause I think a lot of people, especially a lot of people I've worked with over the years, they kind of tap out at that stage. Mm -hmm. And I, I know there's a variety of reasons, but let's just talk about what that stage is about. And maybe tell us a little bit more about like what it is that happens at that stage and maybe what keeps them trapped at that stage. Mm -hmm. Okay, for sure. So I'll actually, I'll actually start with uh, one of my all time favorite quotes that I learned from one of my mentors of mine, which is that making money is boring. Making money, making a lot of money is really boring. Making money is boring. Making a lot of money is really boring. And so I will tell you that to get to that first stage where you're doing consistent 25, 40K months, it's actually a relatively boring process in the sense that you really need three things. You need to have an offer that converts. I work mostly with coaches that are selling relatively higher end offers. Kind of the minimum would be about $3,000 all the way up to you know, $35,000, $50,000. And so it's really about having an offer that works. That's the first step. Then step one or step two, I should say, is really becoming an expert at selling that one offer you and it's really about using your existing assets. It's really about maximizing your ability and as a as a as a as a person that can get things done and be your best salesperson. And so it's not so much about fancy marketing funnels and automation and things like that. It's really about you going out there and doing things to to make those sales happen. And why is that boring? Because that's fascinating to me. So oh, <laughs> tell oh, unpack oh, oh, that oh. part, Ron. Don't okay, don't drop right. that thread for us. <laughs> so yeah, the reason why I would say it's boring, or why many people say it's boring, is because you know it's really about the most many. The reason why people stay stuck, as you know better than most people, is because they chase shiny objects because they mm -hmm. lose focus because they have something that might be working or might be close to working and then they get distracted. Then they get distracted by another thing. So it's really about the reason why it's boring because it's very repetitious. Like once you have an offer that works, then you want to think take a look at okay, what are my main lead sources? And then it's really about kind of just consistently focusing on really like two to three kind of main strategies that you just kind of do over and over and over again on a daily basis basis and really just being consistent with it. That's what I'm talking about when it comes to being boring. And a lot of the stuff that people do, you know, a lot of it really does involve a lot of honestly kind of elbow grease where you have to be really um, you know, putting in the time, posting things on social media, reaching out to people, getting them on sales calls, executing the sales calls, showing up on webinars, maybe like having a webinar presentation that works and then just doing that same webinar presentation over and over and over again for different people's audiences. So that's what I mean when I say many people find this boring, but of course the results are anything but boring. Okay, good. I'm glad you did that distinction. And and I really, I want to hone in on this for a minute because this is where we self-sabotage often. And I, I heard a quote many years ago that always stuck with me, kind of similar to what you're saying is the minute you're bored with your 
idea or your offer and you're ready to move on is the moment you need to lean in and go further Mm -hmm. because everyone else is just getting it. You're bored because you're talking Mm -hmm. about it all day long. I just had this Mm -hmm. conversation with my clients the other day. So, you know, like as creatives, I think oftentimes we become our own worst enemy because Mm -hmm. we're done with something when everyone Mm -hmm. else is just starting to catch on. And that's why those offers don't convert. You haven't optimized it. You haven't lead into it. So absolutely, such great wisdom, Ron. Okay. Thank you for unpacking that a little bit more. Let's talk about what stage two is about. So stage two, this is where once we kind of... Our past that jump start says we have something that's working. We have a little bit of an audience in place where, where we have cat we have cash flow. Then it's really this is the acceleration stage. So really, what we're doing now, this is where we're metaphorically putting gasoline on the fire. And so what I found from working with so many people, um, helping them scale this from six to seven figures, is that the not every there isn't a one size fits all acceleration strategy. The main ways that I've seen people accelerate are one of them is with advertising. Like there is a oftentimes if you have something that's working, you can really accelerate your speed just by paying for more eyeballs, essentially, paying for growth. That is a total strategy. Another strategy is really it's really bigger affiliate launches or or bigger partnerships. It's really going all out, for example, on really doing a a big JV launch, for example, that can be a great thing. That's, that's, has helped many people go from six to seven figures. Another thing might be looking at, uh, these are examples, but these are some of the usual suspects. Another one is bigger stages, like really stretching yourself and speaking on bigger stages, really going out there and actually doing more talks, for example. And also it might include even doing your own bigger live events, for example. That is a a quite quite high risk, high reward strategy that can really work uh, for you if you're looking to go from six to seven figures. And the, um, so I have one important thing I want to add, but let me stop there. Is this all making sense so far? Yeah, totally. So great. So the last thing I want to mention when it comes to this is that in a lot of ways, this is what I call the accelerations principle. And that is that in a lot of ways, going from six to seven figures, really specifically going from, let's say you're doing four or $500,000 a year in revenue and you want to get to a million dollars a year in revenue, a year in revenue. In many ways, it's kind of a, it's kind of an irrational thing in the sense that most people, especially if you keep your expenses in check, which is what I help my clients with and is what I want to recommend, is you can have a really good life if you're doing, you know, four to five hundred thousand dollars a year highly profitably. So if you want to get to seven figures, it's kind of irrational. So what that means is that you're going to have to really stretch yourself if you've not done yet done it yet in ways that you've not really stretched before. It's really going to, to require you to really step outside your comfort zone in a lot of different ways. And so the examples I gave you, the specific strategies that I mentioned, they all really do require that. For some reason, investing more money than they ever have in advertising is a huge stretch for them. Or putting on a big live event is a huge stretch for them. Or doing a big partner launch is a huge stretch for them. And this is one of those things where, if I'm honest, like a lot of people, they never hit that that seven figure mark because they're kind of, they're just not really willing to stretch in that sense, in, in that way. Yeah, I totally get that. I totally see that. And I I love that you're bringing the comfort zone into this because if you're not willing to do what other people aren't doing, <laughs> then you won't stand out. And it's really Absolutely. hard to, to, like you said, like tap into that acceleration. Well said. What about stage three? So stage three is the, that's what we call the over, like, overdrive stage. And this is really the, this is like really like, this is the true actual scaling stage where this is where we really do look into actually building out like a like a bigger team like a not a huge team but really building out a bigger team if you're having if you're having a coaching if you're if you have a coaching business this is where you might be looking at doing things like having sub coaches that do the delivery for you it actually inclo- includes things like you know possibly bringing in an operations person and 
systematizing your business and things along those lines. So that's really what we're talking about when it comes to the overdrive stage. And this really is going to kind of get us to that seven figure mark. And then really, of course, as I mentioned earlier in this conversation, <clears throat> it's up to you to, it's then up to you to decide how big of a business do you want to be? Do you want to scale to the moon or are you happy having a nice, you know, seven figure, low seven figure lifestyle business? Hmm. Um, this is fascinating. I love how you've broken them down into these different stages. And I think as you're listening in, I'm very curious, like if you can see yourself in one of them and maybe even you're in the pre-stage one. So I don't know if that's like stage zero or <laughs> stage uh, uh, 1A maybe, as you haven't even broken in the six-figure mark. But um, like really understanding where you're at, I would imagine, Ron, kind of helps you understand what action you need to be taking right now. Absolutely. To, yeah. And so let's say someone's really stalled out at stage one. We know we need you need an offer that converts. And that sounds like it was one of the foundational pieces. Mm -hmm. What's the one thing, if you've been stalled there for far too long, that you should be doing so that you can keep moving through the stages? Yeah, I would say a lot of times. So if this is of the, okay, there's two things I would, a lot of two things. You mentioned one. Can I give you two answers? Please give okay. us two. I, we'll always say yes to more awesome right. information. Okay. So, um, so a lot of times, um, if you're doing so, when you're saying stage two, that's like someone who might be stuck at like 10k a month or 15, 20k per month. Yeah, yeah, okay. they're stalled out at way too early, but they haven't been able to get into that higher bracket yet. Gotcha. So, oftentimes, there's oftentimes. People, if you're doing like, let's say 10K a month, 15K a month, oftentimes there's a lot of just kind of relatively easy levers you can push in your business that you're just not doing. So for example, the first thing I would do if I'm stalled, look at um, look at some of the leverage points. So for example, I, I take my clients through kind of a more thorough uh, process for doing this, but as, at a high level, you want to look at things like your prices. Okay, oftentimes just doubling your prices many people that you work with that, that we've all worked with are really under under pricing. So oftentimes someone someone can go from like 15k a month to 22,000 or 25,000 a month just by doubling their prices for example. You also want to be looking at you know, basic things, how are you leveraging your time? Many people kind of just are not maximizing the amount of time they're spending on things that bring in money. So point I'm getting at here, I'm not going to go through all go through the entire list, but there's a lot of there's always a lot of optimization done with where with what you're already doing for for really for everyone does that make sense yeah well you know that's what i live and breathe right <laughs> for sure yeah you speak the same language <laughs> and so then the second so the, the second thing i'll say is then it's like if you're at that point where you really feel as though you are really optimized like let's say this would be an ex a really good example would be somebody who they're doing 10 to 15 uh, thousand dollars a month relatively consistently but they got like a pretty small audience on Facebook. They might have like a Facebook group with like uh, 15 or let's say, let's say like 500 people or so, and they have a high end offer and they're just kind of really, they're really, they're really leveraging their small audience and they're doing pretty well. So someone like that, and they're kind of maxed out, maxed out on being on, or they're doing a lot of the optimization stuff that, that we mentioned. Someone like that, they just need to, do they just need to step up to that step up to the big leagues essentially what they need to do is they need to they need to really decide to play big and they need to decide that they're going to you know maybe they're going to go down the advertising route they're going to really get on they're going to make a goal to go, get on 50 stages this year and they're going to make that goal happen or they're going to like do a joint venture launch with 50 partners or something along those lines oftentimes that's kind of what it takes. It is something like it's gonna it's gonna be a huge stretch that they're gonna have to decide, you know, a what that stretch is gonna be, and then b like are they willing to do it? Hmm. Yeah. So they're basically trapped in their safety zone. You know, they're just gonna do the stuff that's yeah, yeah, they're just safe. And um, I think we all know that safe is comfortable, but it's not necessarily gonna get you into those next levels. Absolutely. So you've alluded to some of this stuff already, but let me just make sure we, I've given you a chance to to kind of get it all out. Uh, you know, is there like a core mistake that you see experts make when they're trying to scale into those seven mm -hmm. figures or beyond? 
Yeah, the two biggest ones are so there's one and one A, which are the same thing. It's just the opposite. The biggest mistake is not being focused. Is mm. It's just like they have something that works and they just don't stay the course. Like you mentioned, they don't, they're not willing to get bored with their business. So then the, 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 the opposite of that is they get distracted. Right. And the thing is most people, not, they don't get just distracted once they're like, there's like layers of their shiny object syndrome, which causes people to literally be on that hamster wheel. So by far the number one mistake is that the number two mistake is not being willing to ask for help. And I actually mean more of this. When, when people say that, um, they a lot of times they think about you know hiring team members as, as like a big thing. At at the earlier stages, you don't really need um a lot of team members to have what you know to make half a million dollars a year. You need kind of I mean I did that when I had one virtual assistant essentially. So um oftentimes the asking for help it's more about being willing to leverage your network, leverage your connections. It's about willing to ask for partnerships. It's really, it's really about, it's, it's about willing to ask for referrals and things along those lines. And of course, it does include being willing to hire the right mentors, people like myself, people like yourself. That also can be a big thing that's going to help them get get to get to the next level. But bit, but number one by far, um, focus. Number two is asking for help as far as mistakes go. Can we talk a little bit more about that for a second? Because I think, you know, I've studied the Enneagram. I don't know. Have you ever taken Enneagram or know anything about Enneagram? Ron? I've heard of it. I think I've taken okay. it, but that's one I'm not so I'm not so I'm familiar, familiar with, with it. To be honest. Well, you know, it's just one of the many tools that I like using. And here's one of the things that I found with people um, is that we all have this wound, right? Like something that has happened that's shaped us and we've kind of built our business to protect us from it. And one of the core reasons why people get in their own way is they don't ask for help and they don't feel comfortable mm -hmm. saying, I don't, you know, I don't know what to do here or mm -hmm. like saying, Hey, I need other people to help me promote this. And they get mm -hmm. trapped in this. I got to do it myself mm -hmm. mode. So Absolutely. when you see somebody stuck there, Ron, like <laughs> what is one like mindset shift or a, maybe a better way to look at it that might help them snap out of that? I got to do it all myself mode. Okay, so a great um a great mindset shift, right? I, I'll just give a book recommendation and I'll give you the kind of um the framework. But it's really I read a great book relatively recently. It's called Go for No. Have you heard of this one? Oh, I love it. I've actually interviewed Andrea many years oh, ago. Great. So that so essentially that read read that book and I mean read the book is quite motivational and gives you some there's some nuances. But essentially the whole premise, of course, is in the title, which is if you want to grow, you want to act. It's a really mindset shift of really prioritizing getting more no's. And the way you get more no's is to ask more. So if you're, if you just go out of your way to ask more, and in this case, this might be making more offers for your product or, of course, or making more invitations to be partners with you, for example, and, you know, making it a goal to get 10, 20 no's per week, that is a great way to kind of force you to be asking for help. Yeah, so it's basically destigmatize the concept of no. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't mean anything about you. It just means it's not right for that person. It's not right right now. Like I say no all the time <laughs> to people who want to be on the for show sure. or want me on their show or want me to speak at their events. And it's not a personal thing. It's just a- Totally, for sure. It's an alignment thing oftentimes. So Absolutely. yeah, I love that you shared that book. What a grateful circle moment. <laughs> um, totally. It's been a while since Andrew has been on the, this stage, but uh, it's such a great book. Okay. One more question I want to dig into is, um, let's say somebody who wants to break into that seven figures or beyond, and mm -hmm. they're plateaued in the six figures. What is the biggest difference between those who make it and those who never mm -hmm. make it? Okay, so um, so a lot of the things that we already talked about is those are all still valid as far as just not being able to stretch outside the comfort zone, being safe and all that. But I, I actually do think there is also, um, yeah, you actually talk about this. There, There's a lot of legitimate mindset things that come to that. Um, really, when it comes to kind of seeing yourself as, as a seven-figure player, things that involving the self-image, that really is a part of it. And then there's another part of it 
which is what I think you call, I think you had a course years ago. It's like money DNA, kind of like mm-hmm. the idea of the financial thermostat. Yeah. That's also that. I mean, for someone like if you're legitimately stuck at half a million dollars, you know, what, whatever the number is, and you see that you, your peers are have seven multi seven figure businesses that started around similar times that, that than you did. A lot of times it really is, in this case, it really is that financial thermostat and it is the self-image. So that would be another, um, one of the biggest differences, to be honest. I love that you're bringing self-image into it. You know, do you see yourself as someone who can make six figures or more, or sorry, seven figures or more, right? Mm -hmm. Is because there's these subliminal messages that we give ourselves that trap us at a certain level because we can't imagine ourselves being that person. Absolutely. So good. Absolutely. So good. Yeah, man. I'm bringing it today. I mean, you are hot. (laughs) We need a hot meter. (laughs) It's like my microphone. It's actually catching on fire. Did you ever see, um, are you into rock music? You know, the band Kiss? Some of it. Yeah. Yeah. I remember Kiss from the day. So Kiss, that one of the special effects they do uh, at their, at their concerts, like, uh, I think that's, it's not Ace Freely, but he, he's not in the band anymore, but he would do his guitar solo and then they would do the special effect where the, the guitar catches on fire. So yes, like I need to do that for our, for, for my podcast. I gotta, there you I gotta go. At least have the sound effect. It's a little exactly. safer than there the actual go. microphone Good. Good blowing call. up. <laughs> Good call. Good call. <laughs> so Ron, I know many of our listeners today are going to be jonesing on this and they're going to be like, okay, what's the next step? How do I, how do I connect with Ron? What would be a great way for people to reach out to you and maybe even access a resource that will give them more insight into your work that you do? Yeah, thank you so much for asking that. Yeah, the best way to connect with me is actually on Facebook. Just go to my personal um, Facebook profile, and I post I post a lot of really amazing content on there, if I do say so myself. But if you um, if you go there, add me as a friend, then send me a DM. Let me know that you're a friend of Melanie's and that you heard me on this podcast. I'll send you a special two-hour training that I did, which is the 100K per month roadmap. And it really goes into – it's a really deep two-hour training that really goes into the nuances of how you create your 100K per month marketing machine. So it goes in really well with – um this this call today was very kind of high-level broad strokes that training gets into kind of the nitty gritty details. So I think Mm. you're really going to appreciate that. That's great. Well, um, I will link up Ron's um, Facebook profile in the show notes, but Ron, just for the sake of people listening and don't have a place to write down right now, what is the, uh, is it just Ron Reich on Facebook? Yeah, If you you search Ron Reich on Facebook and look for my handsome face, it should be easy to find. (laughs) Okay, cool. (laughs) Awesome. Okay. So Ron, I can't wait to hear the answer to this because I've known you long enough to know you've probably got some pretty bold things you've done. What would you say is the boldest thing you ever did to amplify the success of your business? Oh, wow. Putting me on the spot here. Um, So really, actually, one of the boldest things that I've done is um, actually to answer your question, for me, actually, kind of talking to that acceleration principle. The thing that comes coming to mind is actually when I decided to put on my first ever live event. This is when I'd be doing one-on-one consulting as a uh, one-on-one consulting as a uh, consultant. I just I was doing that for about a year, and then a mentor of mine said, "You got to do a live event," and I was like so scared of doing a live event. And I ended up doing this. I was known as a launch specialist at the time. I ended up doing this ten thousand dollar per person launch intensive. Actually, I think it was the regular price was ten thousand. I actually charged five thousand for the tickets, and I ended up getting about ten people in there. And I had never done a live event before, and I was just so I was so scared. It was like it was like taking the bar exam all over over again. But I really remember after I did that event, I remember I just really felt like I had like I was a new person. There's there was for me there was few like personal growth experiences that can match just putting on and executing your a successful live event. So that was mm-hmm. one that really kind of catapulted me to an next level in my business. And then that eventually ended up me launching my mastermind, which is really my main, my main program that I have right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Live events are definitely one of those accelerators and Absolutely. Uh, 
you know, whether you're doing them online or in person, but I think there's something about doing them in person that's yeah, hard do them to person. replicate. Weak sauce only does them virtually. Do them in person. Yes. <laughs> that would be my, uh, my two cents on that. Well, one. we know where you stand on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And is there one thing you wish you would have done sooner? Because now you know how much it was going to accelerate results for you. One thing that I wish I did sooner, it's kind of the, the, the it's that big question. It, it's it's the the number one mistake that, mistake that I mentioned. It's really that. It's kind of if I were to go back in time, I would have, you know, we've all kind of iterated and done kind of things. I would have just, you know, focused on like one offer. I would always just would have focused on one offer, one audience with just one specific framework, and really just gone deep, deep, deep into that. And I and I, and I overall have done that. But um, I have gotten distracted for, for, from that from time to time. Yeah, I think we all do that. Yeah. And, and it's actually really, it's it's very and much music to my ears to hear you say that because so many people are multi-passionate, multi-talented. They're chasing lots of different ideas and they're like, don't make me choose. I want to do it all. But, <laughs> you know, I've tried to do a lot of different things and not only is it exhausting, but your market gets confused. So, and a confused mind doesn't buy. So it's Yeah, really yeah, yeah. It's exciting to hear someone else say what I always say. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, for sure. Yeah, cool. All right, Ron. Well, this has been fantastic. And as you're listening in, if you're realizing it is time to get on that roadmap to 100K months or a seven-figure breakthrough, like I highly recommend reaching out to Ron. Like I've known Ron since way back in the day and he's always been that guy who's the stealth you know, weapon mm -hmm. behind these big names making breakthroughs and- um, he's, uh, he has got quite a great strategy to help you get there. So I hope you'll take advantage of it. Thank you, Ron, for being with me today. Thanks so much for having me. Talk to you next time. Thanks for tuning in today, Amplifier. Be sure to join us right now in the Amplify Your Authority community at authorityamplifiers.com. And I'll share my seven proven tips to be a highly paid expert that stands out in a crowded market. Plus, we're going to keep this conversation going, and I want to hear from you how you're going to amplify your authority and make a greater impact. Before you go, please take a minute to give our show and our guests some love over on your favorite podcasting platform. Subscribe, rate, and review. Leave your full name, and I'll spotlight you and your authority on social media. <laughs>